In this video we're going to focus on the historical context surrounding the Doncaster plant works. It's really important that we understand the timeline um, of when the plant works was initially created and understand the key events in Britain uh, that ran alongside Doncaster plant works own. That will help us to understand why it developed the way it did. A key point right from the very beginning um, is to note that the events within the timeline of Britain's wider historical context affected the Doncaster plant works itself. And what we mean by this is that the events within British history helped to shape what happened to the plant works itself. For instance, when Britain experienced prosperity during the Industrial Revolution, so too did the plant works. When Britain was affected by World War I and World War II, so too was the plant works. So that's important to recognise that it is this wider historical context that helped to shape Doncaster Plant Works itself. So essentially we've got five main phases. The first one that we're going to look at is the growth phase. This is when the site was established itself. We know that it was built in 1853. This was slap bang in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. This was about economic growth and businesses like the Doncaster Plant Works growth tremendously in size and became very profitable. The second phase revolves around World War I that started in 1914. And as mentioned, British historical events helped to shape the site itself. And we know that because of um, laws like DORA, the Defence of the Realm Act, we know that the site was used to help the war effort. The third phase was in between World War I and World War II. We refer to this as the interwar years, and this was when the Flying Scotsman was developed and built. That period that became romanticised in rail history where um, you had this uh, significant machine, the Flying Scotsman, that broke the 100 miles per hour speed limit. Of course, the fourth phase is World War II. Again, the Doncaster Plant Works was used for the war effort, and this was around six years. And then we have a period of um, continuity, really, where employment's still very high during the 50s, 60s and 70s. Britain was doing very well. But from the 18, uh, from 1980s onwards, we've got the fifth phase. And this is when we experience Britain's industrial decline. And when Britain's industrial output went down, so too did that of the Doncaster plant works. And then we begin to see um, its decline and ev eventually it um, demolition of part of it. So let's focus on the industrial revolution of the wider historical context of Britain during um, the just before the 1850s. We know that Britain was largely agriculturally based. Um, here we can see, remember when we looked at the London Olympic ceremony opening, um, we saw this massive transition uh, away from the countryside to the towns and cities. This was mirrored within Doncaster itself, that by the middle of the 19th century, 1853, we see that the plant works was actually built. We got mass migration from the countryside into Doncaster, and Doncaster went from a town of a few thousand to literally becoming an industrial powerhouse. We shouldn't underestimate the impact that this had on ordinary life. Remember, um, life in a village during Doncaster, it was seen as a very, very small world. This was because of the poor transportation. Essentially, they relied on roads um, and travel between and trade between towns um, was very, very limited indeed. We know that the um, towns revolved around um, agriculture. And as a result of this, life was primitive in comparison um, to life during the Industrial Age. Um, and Doncaster was a very, very small um, village. Essentially, it was a collection of different hamlets. But after um, the creation of the Doncaster Plant Works, Doncaster um, grew inside, in size tremendously. This was a pivotal event in Doncaster's history. By 1850, um, the country was beginning to transform. Remember, we had the invention of the rocket, and this was the world's first steam-powered engine. Eventually, this would then lead to um, inventing steam engines and steam locomotives on much lo larger scales. Uh, the steam locomotive trans 
transformed life in England. We explore how it even changed people's diet, what they eat, because they were able to get food from different parts um, of the country. We know that it transformed employment and that it led to skilled workers. It helped to improve the coal industry um, because steam power relied on coal. Don't forget during this era, it was the period of the entrepreneur. And the entrepreneur was the businessman. Um, and this was key as into understanding um, why Doncaster was chosen um, itself. But don't forget, it is this wider historical context. Britain was transforming. And it was transforming from an agricultural-based society into an industrial one. When going back to the anchor chart that we've, we've used in the classroom, it's clear that this is about transformational change. In exam, um, our exam um, responses, we can use phrases like significant and considerable change. But on a much broader basis, this was a level of transformational change. As mentioned, we know that the site was established in 1853 um, and this is where we actually visited. We went on field work to this part of the site. This is now being um, demolished, um, but don't forget 1853, really important for us. So let's go back to exploring the growth phase. Remember, this period in British history um, was a period of tremendous industrial growth. This was mirrored by the development of the Doncaster plant work site itself. You can see here that there were different amounts of workshops that were created. You can see in this photo here that this was about heavy industry. In other areas you can see it was linked to the railway station itself and to the railway network because it would overhaul steam locomotives and repair steam engines and get it back onto there. We know that there were different areas linked to um, the paint workshops and different areas where they would repair the trains. But remember, this was the period that was referred to as the growth phase. We're still focusing on the context. We're not looking into the specific details of the First World War. But remember what we said before, how British um, historical events helped to shape what happened at the plant works itself. So here we can see um, how the plant works was used for World, World War I. Remember it was used for the war effort because of the government powers um, linked to the Defence of the Realm Act, or we refer to it as DORA. Now the wider context of Doncaster between the wars, the interwar period, um, was quite unique to the railway um, industry and coal industry because that continued to boom. Um, Britain did experience a bit of an economic slump during this period, but the railway industry can, continued to, to thrive. And we've explored already the romanticism surrounding the flying Scotsman. But this was almost like the golden era for Doncaster and the railway period. The romanticism surrounding the Flying Scotsman and breaking the 100 miles per hour record. So this interwar period was, was a bit of a boom time for the, for the town itself. Again, going back to that concept of the wider historical period, 1939 to 1945, the period of World War II, a, a significant event in British history, was obviously a significant event for the site itself. We know that the site was used for building weapons um, and vehicles to help the war effort. And as mentioned at the beginning, the, the fifth and final phase um, revolves around Britain's industrial decline. And even though Britain continued to boom throughout the 1950s, 60s and 70s in terms of the railway age, um, Britain saw an economic and uh, industrial decline in the 1980s. And this too was seen in Doncaster. Um, and we remember, when we, we remember when we went to see the site, uh, we saw how parts of it had been um, demolished. Even though Wabtec was still thriving just over here. Um, this video is about highlighting the context of Britain and how it was mirrored um, within Doncaster um, with the site itself.